Hey guys, what's up? Travis McGee here with M Grills, and today we have our Big M. We're gonna fire it up. We're gonna show you how to do some fire management with it, uh, how we like to cook on our Big M's, and uh, kind of give you an overall tour of the big smokers. So uh, stay tuned. We got lots to show you. So this particular smoker is called the Beast. It's a three-door Big M, fully insulated, as a uh, refractory insulated firebox, but we do ours a little bit different. Uh, it's basically, it's a steel lined firebox with refractory installation on the outside. Uh, it's ex extremely efficient. It's all made of 12 gauge steel, interior fully welded with two inches of uh, very dense thermal insulation and also 12 gauge steel on the outside shell that's fully welded as well. Doors are fully uh, insulated, um, thermostat controlled. So you can really just dial it in let the uh, solenoid control your temperatures. You can load it with wood. You can load it with a big lump charcoal with a little bit of wood. There's so many different ways you can smoke on it, but the whole idea is to make it to where you can leave your smoker and let it do all the work for you. So uh, save a lot of valuable time. Uh, is, since it's very efficient, you're gonna save a lot of money uh, in fuel. Um, yes, you can do overnight cooks with it. Uh, there's different ways we like to set up to uh, do cooks like that for long cooks, but um, you can, you know, during the day, just run this as a normal stick burner and just burn wood very clean all day long. So a lot of different ways to cook on it. Uh, let's get busy. We're going to show you how to fire it up. So right now we're going to use some uh, super premium Fogo lump charcoal just to get the fire going. You can just use wood in this process if you just want to stack wood. But I like to get them going with a little charcoal. It's a little quicker on getting a nice bed. Uh, charcoal bed going and since that firebox is so well insulated it's just gonna leave you with a lot of heat all day long you could use a torch we got some little fire starter blocks that we're gonna use And that's it. We're going to leave the door open. Just get that charcoal going really well. Be a little smoky at first. Uh, we're going to watch our stack. Watch the temperatures right now. We can go ahead and just set the thermostat. Uh, we'll just go ahead and set this at about 250 or so. Now you can see when he heard that, that did open up our solenoid. So all that's gonna do is just open and shut the air off all throughout the duration of a cook. These are 16 inch splits. These are from a company in Fort Worth called Gourmet Wood Products. You can start it off with about six splits of wood just to get a nice bed of charcoal going. And then, then, then there, you just add some wood periodically. If you wanna get a hot bed of charcoal like what we're gonna to do today, then we'll just throw on about two sticks of wood and that'll give us many hours of cooking on here with no babysitting. It is going pretty well right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shutting the firebox door. We're gonna let that heat start drawing through the smoker. See through that opening in the firebox. We'll watch our temperatures. Now we're set about 250 here. You know, we are cold in the smoker right now, so we're gonna start letting the, the steel warm up and get this thing cooking. About 20 minutes since we fired this up, we're gonna get in here and just check this charcoal. Now here I like to just take a shovel. We'll spread out, flatten that charcoal out a little bit. Start getting in all the corners and make a nice bed. That's it. Now you got a nice bed of coal. It's gonna last you all day. Temperature's going up nicely. We're starting to warm up in the smoker. You see how even the temperatures are. And this is a 12 foot 
bottom's still a little cool, but that will heat up here as we get get going. For a 12-foot smoker, it's really impressive. Once we get about 150 or so, this is where we like to put our wood on. So we're gonna take probably about three sticks. We're gonna lay them. Yep, one right there. We like to stack our wood this way because fire likes to climb. So if you add a little uh, gap in the middle, you'll still get really nice oxygen. When those bottom logs start to ignite, they'll climb up onto the top one. So you can see there, they're already starting to burn. So that's gonna generate some smoke. And then we're gonna watch that as that smoke dies down. Our heat will continue to rise, our smoke will die out a little bit and have a nice clean fire burning. Now the color of the smoke is gonna tell you everything about your smoker. If you have dark gray smoke, uh, you know, you're burning dirty. And that over a long period of time, if you have your food cooking, and over a long period of time, if your food is on your smoker and you have a lot of dirty smoke, it's gonna give you a pretty bitter barbecue. Some people like a heavier smoke, I like a little more of a medium. I don't like it personally too clean the entire time because then I just can't taste any smoke, but I don't want to be burping smoke. And this is just personal preference of what you like to do in your restaurant. When the temperature reaches our desired temp, the damper will shut off and it will close all the airflow into the firebox. And what that will do is that will start generating some heavier smoke out the stack. And then as the smoker cools off just a little bit, it will open back up and then it'll, you'll have a nice clean rush of air. It'll clean out that smoke and you're burning clean again. So it kind of does this long process on and off throughout the entire cook. Now if you notice on our Big M smokers, we have these two intakes. What that does, that is basically like a carb for the smoker. This really helps out when, if you're burning a lot of wood in here and your intake shuts off. Well, if you notice on a lot of commercial smokers, the smoke, once you shut off your intake airflow, you have nothing to draw the smoke out of your smoker. It's just gonna sit in there and bounce around and not really leave the stack. So by having these two intakes, and it's above the firebox, so it doesn't affect your firebox at all. This adds some air that pulls in through the smoker, and it will pull that dirty smoke out of your cooking area. So if you're gonna burn strictly wood, a lot of wood, we recommend keeping those open. If you're gonna burn just a bunch of charcoal with a little bit of wood, you can keep them closed because for the most part, you're gonna be burning really clean anyways. And you wanna really keep that heat in there. We're watching our temperature going up. We did raise the, thermos, the thermostat just a little bit. We're gonna let temperature, it's about 30 degrees outside right now. Starting to warm up. But we're gonna throw just a, one more log of wood on here. There you go. So see at this grate, we're at 225. The top grates I like to be more so, probably about 275 to 300. 225, about 210 right here. So we're gonna give this some time. It's still, it's only 845, so it has only been 15 minutes. So the temperature here is going to be reading right here in the middle of your smoker. So that's going to give you an idea of what your temps are in your pretty much close to your two middle racks and right in between. These thermometers are set to where they are uh, pretty much right below your top cooking grate. 
So at your grate, which would be a tad higher, will be a little bit warmer. And your bottom grate down here is quite a bit cooler. But as you start cooking more, these do warm up. You know, the uh, hot air rises, so you definitely, you do get warmer as you go up, but from left to right, as you can see, they're pretty, very close. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start getting the food and put it on. We got some beef ribs, we got a prime brisket, a couple of pork shoulders, and some spare ribs. And we're gonna load this up. There you go, you just hear that? That is the damper that just shut. So right now it is just regulating temperature. So we got this set about 275. That's down here in this middle grates. Yep, we're quite a bit hotter on top, which is exactly where we wanna be. And uh, we're gonna go and load. We're gonna show you the space that you have on the racks. So as we pull this out, this door open. So this is a, a 12 pound prime brisket. So you can see your space here. You can easily one, two, three, four to five brisket should be no problem on here per rack and then right under there we'll put some beef ribs and that's a three rib beef plate so again you're looking at one two three four five even possibly six So we're going to shut those down, we'll add pork, so this is actually just a boneless pork butt. There you go, and you can see how much room you have on this rack. That could be, that is a lot of pork shoulders on here. So that's a one, two, three, four. That's easily eight pork shoulders per rack. And then underneath, we'll just throw three racks of ribs. Again, a lot of spacing per rack. There we go. So let's see our time here. 9.07. Okay, it's been about three hours. We're gonna just come out here and just check our temperature. So we're cruising right along. Let's check our fire. So we get a nice bed of hot coals. We can shake that ash of it, or shake the ash off of it. Shake that ash. <laughs> so personally, when I smoke my briskets, I'm just looking, I go everything by uh, the bark of how it's looking. So right now, you know, we're not there. We're gonna have a few hours before our bark really starts forming, and then that's when we'll start wrapping. Okay, so it's been three hours. We're just gonna check our heat. We're still cruising along. Let's check our firebox. We still got a really nice bed of hot coal. But you can notice the wood has burnt down. 
And so what we want to do now, we're just going to check our temperatures here. And we're good. Food's cooking along. So if I'm going to continue burning this way, it's just going to be really clean. I mean, pretty much all we're doing is just burning. We just have heat in the smoker, but uh, I want to start introducing some more wood. So we'll go ahead and grab probably just two more sticks of wood. Just place it right over the hot coals. See that shot there? Now you'll notice the stack will start generating a little bit of smoke. So it was just burning really clean, but it's holding heat very well. So we're cooking. We want to get a little bit of smoke coming out of there because we don't want to keep it super clean the entire time. But then again, it's preference. Maybe you want it super clean the entire time. Now if you notice the intake, you can really see the air just being sucked in because that fire is burning really fast. So we got a lot of movement, a lot of air movement in there, which is really good for when we're burning this wood. And right now, since we are burning it pretty hot, we got our temperature, you know, we're kind of, we're more or less shooting for a target of about 275, 250, 300 in areas. So if we're going, if we just want to really prolong this cook and cook much slower and not burn as much fuel, all we got to do is just drop that thermostat down and it will keep just regulating more often. So it really just depends on your style of cooking and what you want to do. You want to go more low and slow. You want to kind of speed it up a little bit. The beautiful thing about these smokers is that since the temperature does vary from top to bottom, is that just building one fire, you can have so many different zones for cooking. Okay, so the damper just shut. And now you'll notice that we'll start getting some smoke coming out of the stack. So we have a faint smoke now coming out. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but what I'm gonna do is I will open these up while we're pointing it here and just see if you can see how much faster the air movement will come out of the stack. So now with these open, we have more movement through the stack, but it's not affecting our firebox. So what that's doing is now that's just drawing air into the smoker and pushing out any stale smoke that's just sitting in the smoker. You have now have some air movement. That's really going to give you some good taste in barbecue. All right, we are just checking this again. It's been another hour. Thermostat's still steady. Temperature's inside, still steady. Get a peek at the meat. So our ribs are looking really good. Very nice, good color. Pork shoulders are looking really good as well. I will check beef. A little bit longer. I'm getting close with the bark, but a little bit longer. It needs to harden up just a little bit more. Beef ribs are looking good. She's still going to let it cook. Our 
fire, still nice bed of hot coals. Keeping everything nice and steady. Don't need a big raging fire, just a nice clean hot fire. Stack is very clean. All right, let me give this a little peep. We're gonna check our ribs. Okay, I'm just checking my ribs. All I'm doing is checking to see how pliable they are. They got a nice good flex. I'm gonna let them go a little bit longer. I want those bones to be just a little bit looser. This right here would be a good competition style rib. It's a little bit more firm, but we're gonna let it go a little longer. But if you can see, it's a really great color. Very, very easy to do. So one thing that we haven't really touched on was how you could utilize the different racks to speed up or slow down your cooks. So since we are at different temperatures from each rack, it's about 20 degrees from this rack to that rack to that rack to that rack. So your middle two racks are really about to, they're, they're very close to one another. I like to use the top rack if I need to speed something up. Uh, if you need to slow something down or just start holding food, you could use the bottom rack. If you are gonna utilize all racks to cook the same food, like say if it's briskets, um, there's no problem. You're just gonna have to move your briskets around so they'll all cook about evenly, or you're just gonna have maybe your two top racks, those briskets are gonna be done a little bit quicker. So, uh, you know, just depending on how you want to, uh, I guess just depending on how you're wanting to schedule your food, uh, whether you want them done all the same. You could also uh, say if you just wanna use these two racks, they're in the whole smoker. Well, you know all these racks are gonna be the same from left to right. There's no really any variance uh, at all. Same with the bottom. So um, whether you wanna do all beef in one door, all pork in another door, or, you know, you know it, it just really depends on however you wanna cook. But that's the way I recommend doing it. Um, I like to kind of speed things up or slow things down if need to be. So I like to keep one rack kind of open. Uh, but if you need to utilize it because you need to put a lot of food on, it's all right, load it up. Just start moving your food around as needed. So it has been an hour since I was out here last. And I'm just kind of showing you guys what the smoker is going to do, whether if you're going to come out here every hour to check on it or every few hours. But again, it's been another hour. Our temperature is still steady. We're still at that 250 degrees. Our great temperatures. We're still the same. I have opened this door because I did check my ribs uh, about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. Let's check our fire. Now we're just down to a nice hot bed of coals. We're still giving off plenty of heat. It's powering the smoker, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple more sticks on uh, just to kind of generate some more smoke. You see the way I'm laying my wood down. And I got that nice hot bed of coals so the wood pretty much starts igniting right away. Go ahead and just shut the door. Now if I wanted to just not have to come out here and watch my fire every two hours or so or three hours, and not worry about the heat. I could load a lot more wood in there if I want. I just gotta be aware that when I do, when every time this shuts, if I have a lot of wood and it hasn't really fully combusted, I'm gonna start introducing more smoke. Not necessarily a bad thing because when this does open up, 
you're going to have a mixture of that clean and smoke, uh, you know, clean and heavier smoke throughout the whole cook. But overall, you know, it's not going to be like an issue unless you really load it down heavy. You can always add more charcoal if you want, if you just want to burn a long longer. But in here, we don't want to do that. We're just going to add about a couple sticks of wood and that's going to give us a few hours in between. So when you are smoking on a big smoker like this, if you do, if you want to just keep your temperatures, uh, you know, fairly close, say on 250 degrees or so, usually about two sticks is all you need and it'll keep this big smoker going uh, without with very little minimum uh, damper opening and shutting, uh, you know, for a good, good amount of hours. But if you really want to crank this thing up and you want this smoking hotter, you want it in that 300, 350 plus degree range, maybe you want your top racks to be, you know, much hotter, then uh, yeah, definitely you might want to add four sticks of wood, five sticks, uh, and get you know, just that bigger fire going. Um, so I could easily just shut this damper down by lowering this damper just a little bit or I say damper, I call it the thermostat. By shutting this thermostat down just a little bit, um, you know, what that's gonna do is when this thermometer starts, uh, when this thermostat inside starts dropping in temperature, when it hits this temperature, uh, it, this will open up. So now allow that air and it will kind of maintain it. But here, I do want it higher. You notice our door handles are pretty unique. And the reason behind this is that, say if you have a plate of food in your hands and you can't open the door, you know, we don't like slam latches or anything like that because, you know, if you got something in your hand, you can't open it. Well, here, you could use your arm to open your door and then back the door out very easily. So, um, you know, that's just a nice feature to be able to open the door. And of course, if you have it, you know, you could open it like that. But, and they're all stainless steel nice they're not going to rust on you or anything like that so they'll always stay looking good but let's go ahead we're going to check our ribs while we're in here because the ribs are only going to take about five hours and they are looking really good lighten it up a little bit so the ribs are looking really good I'm just looking for that you know, I like to bend them and flex them. When they get a little bit, uh, they feel like they're going to tear just a little bit. That's when I know they're about ready. Those ribs are about done. Okay, these ribs over here are done. So I'm going to go ahead and take them out. You see that beautiful color. Beautiful color. Uh, I'm just gonna wrap these up. We'll just let those rest. Go ahead while I'm here. I'm gonna check the internal temperature of this pork shoulder. Yeah, about 155. I like to be about 203. So we got a ways to go. And as we come over here and look at the brisket and the beef ribs, That bark is getting really, really close. So just a little bit longer and I'm about ready to wrap. Since I just pulled the ribs off, 
I'm gonna go ahead and add two more sticks of wood just to really get this fire going because I'm not gonna come back and check it for a while. So I just added two more logs and then I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna come back here in a couple hours. Alright, it's been a couple hours, so I'm going to come out here and check it. I'm doing good with the fire. Let's check our brisket. Yeah, now we're getting... We're getting to a really good point for that bark. We can go ahead and wrap that. I want you to see, this is what I like to do with my briskets. If you can see there, let me just take this off the tripod, get a little closer. So we got that nice bark that's formed. It's a really good color, kind of a nice mahogany color. Look at the beef ribs are looking really good. So I'm gonna take this off and wrap it. Make it work. Go put that nice and snug right back on the smoker. Now I don't wrap the beef ribs at all. I like that bark to form. Don't need to wrap it. It's looking really good. Wrap that brisket. Let's check our pork shoulders. Man, they are looking good. Such beautiful color. If you can see that, just beautiful. I like to be about 200. It's very little firm in the center, so it's got some, definitely got some more to go, but about 165 is the internal temperature right now. Look for about 205 or so for me. Take a peek. I didn't check, I have not checked the internal temperature of this brisket at all yet. I'm strictly just going by the bark. So the bark was looking good. I'm at about 180 right now, internal temperature. Let's check these beef ribs here. Man, those are like butter. 190. Those are getting really close. 193. Those are almost done. Man. So these are the ribs that we pulled off the smoker. I just sliced them up. Some of the guys inside have already got their hands in them. And they are good. But yeah, I do want to show you, important thing, you know, that smoke ring, very juicy. You know, there's, and this was nothing special. I mean, this is just some rib rub and that's it. I didn't spritz, there's no wrapping. These aren't some special type of rib. These are picked up at a local grocery store, just some spare ribs, but very, very good, very juicy. Very good, very easy. So it's been a few more hours. It's now three o'clock. Um, you can see we just got a nice bed of hot coals. Our wood, the wood has burnt down from earlier that we put in. 
Uh, but we are still trucking on along. The pits, we're hot, we're good. Uh, I'm not gonna add any more wood because uh, the last time I probed my food, the briskets, they're about done. Pork shoulders about done and those same with the beef ribs. So we don't need to put any more wood on here. Uh, we're just gonna hold the heat that's in the smoker for you know the rest of the way. So that's it. I mean, that's, that's all your fire management that you had to do. Um, I think overall we put in six, maybe well, eight, seven pieces of wood. I'll have to look at the film, but it's about seven pieces of wood, maybe nine at the most for an all day cook. Um, that's it, super simple to run. Food, another probe. My beef ribs are done. Let's check our brisket here. Yeah, 197 on our brisket. So it's just about done. Let's check our pork shoulder. Look at these beautiful shoulders. And they are gorgeous. Seventy-three, one seventy-eight. That's a little bit of tug right there in the center. I'm gonna let it go 181. That's definitely got some more to go. Now that is just beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna put some foil over here because I'm gonna let this rest. Look at that. See how beautiful that is. All right, let's see if our brisket's ready now. We are done. Look at that, beautiful. We'll let these rest a little bit and we'll shred them up. That's perfect pulled pork sandwiches. Mm -hmm.